Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hayyakum Allah Ayywa Fudala Continue on in our study of Bulugha Maram the comprehensive book Kitab al-Jami' the chapter of warning against evil conduct and as we said as we have said in the past uh, sittings in the past lectures that this group of ahadith that Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani that he grouped these group of ahadith to be from amongst those hadith which warn against wicked conduct and some of the various traits. So in these group of hadith, they mention the types of traits and character characteristics that we should avoid as mu'mineen that are unbefitting uh, for the believer to possess. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi wa rizqin tayyib wa amal al And may Allah protect us from wicked and sinful conduct. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. We left off in the Hadith 1288, narrated Abu Hurairah, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. A man said, or actually, in fact, we left off on Hadith 1291, and this is also a Hadith of Abu Hurairah, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Do you know what is backbiting? They replied Allah and his messenger know best. He said it is saying something about your brother which he dislikes. Someone asked what if what I said about my brother was true? He replied, if what you say about him is true, you have backbitten. And if it is not true, you have slandered him. Ru'ahu or akhrajahu Muslim. In this hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the topic of the hadith is the sinfulness of speaking about your brother, of backbiting your brother, that this is uh, a sinful characteristic and it is from those characteristics which are unbefitting for the believer to possess and those characteristics that Ibn Hajar is warning us uh, against which come from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, come from the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And so in this hadith, uh, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there are many, many uh, benefits. And from amongst those benefits uh, are that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Atadruna mal ghiba. Do you know what ghiba is? Do you know what backbiting is? So here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam posed a question to his Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een in order to teach them about those manners and characteristics that they should avoid. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began by positing a question or posing a question to his uh, Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een and he said, you know, do you know what ghiba is? Do you know what it is? So that way it would give his companions, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, the ta'rif istilahi, a shari. It would give them the knowledge of what ghiba 
or backbiting means as a Sharia, uh, Sharia term, as a linguistic Sharia term, or not just as a linguistic term, but as in as far as the Shar. What does this term mean? Because it's very important. It's as if the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was saying that it is very important that you know and understand what this is. So let me explain it to you. And so he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained this to his Sahaba Radiyallahu Ta'ala Majma'een letting them know the Ta'rif, letting them know the meaning of this uh, sinful characteristic that they must do their best to avoid because it's one, one of the major sins. And it's a sin which is easy for a person to fall into. And we know this from another hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. مَرَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِينَ فَقَالْ إِنَّهُمْ لِيُعَذِّبَانَ وَمَا يُعَذِّبَانَ فِي كَبِيرٍ أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَكَانَ اللَّهِ يَسْتَتْرُ مِنَ الْبَوْءِ وَأَمَّا الْآخِرِ فَكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّبِيمَ the Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith, as he was walking by some graves, he said, verily they're being punished and they're not being punished for something which is, uh, that the people think is is great. You know, it's it's not something that, it's something that the people take lightly. And then he mentioned, as for one of them, that they used to not clean themselves properly with tahara, you know, making a stinja, cleaning their private parts. And as for the other one, is they used to carry tales around the community with the intent of spreading wickedness. So they wanted to spread uh, either a type of slandering, or it could even be a type of riba. It could be either or, depending on this sharia tarif, this, this understanding that we get from this hadith. Letting us know that the backbiting, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is that you speak about your brother uh, with something which is true. Something that he dislikes that's true about him. That's backbiting. And then Namima or or Bahtan is actually the term the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned here is speaking about your brother with something that he dislikes that he is unaware uh, that he uh, that is not true about him so it shows us the difference between those terminologies as sharia terms and this is what the prophet sallallahu was making clear for his companions letting us know that they're all sinful characteristics and what we learn from both of those hadith that those are all major sins whether it be Bahtan, meaning, you know, to lie, outright lie about someone with something they hate. Or whether it be riba, to spread, uh, to uh, backbite your brother with something he dislikes and that that's true about him. Or namima, which is to spread uh, wicked and sinful speech about someone uh, with the intent of spreading wickedness, with the in intent, with a negative intention. Wallahum Mista'an. What we learn from this hadith, uh, this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or before we get into the Fawaid, some other important points that we want to mention as Imam bin Uthaymeen, Rahmatullah Alayhi Rahmatul Wasiyah, that he mentioned in regards to the explanation of this hadith. And one of those things that he mentioned was that the importance of making the distinguish uh, of distinguishing between those various categories of when it is lawful there's a lawful type of riba and then there's most of riba is madhmum or is madhmuma huh most of backbiting is sinful it's wicked as we just said it's a wicked and sinful trait okay but we have exceptions and those exceptions to make it uh, a concise way of talking about it, it is when there is a sharia maslaha. There is a sharia objective, an important sharia objective uh, and benefit. So, for example, let me give you two cases. Uh, two cases. One is speaking about Ahl bidah 
And we know this from Imam Anoa'i, if you want to have more additional explanation, go to Imam Anoa'i's uh, book, Riyadh al-Salihin, and you'll find a chapter entitled, What is Permissible from Backbiting? You know, or what is permissible of backbiting in Ahl al-Bid'ah, or something similar to this. So you'll find that Imam Anoa'i is very clearly showing that there are Sharia objectives and Sharia maslaha, if there is maslaha, to speak about someone with something they dislike that is true about them, then there are times when that's a permissible act. That it's not always mithmuma. And this is what Ahlul Sunnah are united upon. Meaning when Ahl Bid'ah, someone who is a threat to the religion, they are changing the religion, they are falsifying concepts in the religion, they are distorting and deviating from the religion, and especially they're doing it outwardly to where others will be affected and others will take on their creed or their uh, methodology or what have you, then it may become imperative to speak about that individual regarding their mistakes, regarding that sinful bid'ah, the way they change the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is a type of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. So it's a there's a maslaha shari, there's a sharia benefit in that it's commanding the good and forbidding the evil, forbidding the bid'ah, the, the evil of spreading bid'ah, and commanding the good by uh, inviting the person back to the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, it is, uh, it is uh, it defending the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam. And so that's one of the cases. The other case that the scholars mention also is that uh, as far as a sharia maslaha or objective is, for example, if there is a uh, argument or conflict between two believers, or between a husband and wife more specifically, that in order that it's permissible to, uh, if you will, to lie in this situation in order to have them resolve and to reunite and their love to be rekindled between them. Because there is a Sharia objective of, of maintaining the Muslim family or maintaining the brotherhood or what have you, so for you to go and say, you know, so-and-so he said, and it may not be true, but you're trying to bridge that gap and lighten the heart of the one who detests the other, you know, and say he, he was really saying some very positive things about you and he really wants to uh, work this thing out. And then you go to the other one and you perhaps say something similar and this causes them to uh, be brothers again. Then there's a Sharia Maslaha for this uh, activity. But getting back to what we mentioned is this Ghiba, that this is one of the cases is when speaking about Ahl Bid'ah, when you are speaking about the people of innovation or the, uh, uh, you know, as far as commanding the good or forbidding the evil or someone who is a wicked sinner, for example. And an example for that case scenario would be, for example, if a woman, she, uh, especially in many of our communities that have, especially for reverts, this can be a more of a challenge without having the community that sometimes a sister may want to get married uh, from a brother or a community and she doesn't know uh, uh anything about the brother or she only knows certain things oh he's a student of knowledge and he's this but someone knows that he is is really very harsh with women and beats women or whatever the case may be he's got some record of wicked and sinfulness in this case in order for that sister to make a proper judgment about her future and about her marital her choice of a spouse then it will be permissible to uh, alert her wali or what have you not to spread wickedness, not to spoil the marriage, but for her safety. She has a right to know that. If you have this knowledge of something that, that not that a person made a mistake and he made toba, but we're talking about something, maybe a consistent trait of someone or whatever the case may be. Moving on to the specific fawa'id or benefits of this hadith, one of the benefits is the husn al-ta'lim al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the excellent 
way of teaching of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, and what illustrates that from this hadith is the statement when he said, Atadrona, do you know? Do you know? Uh, so this here was showing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was trying to call their attention to something very important. So he used this ibarah. So this is a type of hikmah, and this is a way, an excellent way of teaching by using questions. And you see this uh, often by good teachers in any subject, and especially from ulama, especially when they have smaller study circles, some of them they really, and some of even the students of knowledge, they really test their students, and they really try to get them engaged. So this engages you by asking you questions. So this is from husn ta'lim. This is from the excellent way of teaching of the Prophet sallallahu Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the excellent manners of the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in because, and this is illustrated from the statement when they said, Allahu, Allahu wa rasuluhu adam. That Allah and His Messenger know best that they had good adab. They had adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adab with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and attributing the knowledge, the knowledge of the shara back to Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the muballag. He gave the uh, message, he took the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or was given the message from Allah wa ta'ala to spread to mankind sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And another uh, benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us that the uh, the importance of also being concise and uh, clear in your speech when delivering the message. And this is what we see from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to keep people's interest and in order to speak on their level, to be able to give them very concise speech, concise and clear speech so that they would uh, have a, a clear understanding of his sunnah and those traits on which they need to avoid. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that ghiba is muharram in its asl and that there are only those exceptions that we mentioned uh, for example warning the community against ahl bid'ah or bid'ah and warning the community against uh, someone who is a wicked uh, deviant sinner especially one who's doing it out in the open and those are some of the main benefits of this hadith in the next hadith hadith 1292 narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not envy one another, do not outbid one another with a view to raising the price. Do not have hatred for one another, do not boycott one another. And do not enter into a transaction when the other has already entered it and be brothers to one another, O servants of Allah. A Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. He does not wrong him nor desert him, nor despise him. Piety is found here, and he pointed three times to his chest. Despising uh, a Muslim brother is enough evil for any man to do. Every Muslim's blood, property, and honor are unlawful to be violated by another Muslim. Uh, uh, and this is Ruahu Muslim. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim, this is a hadith azim. This great hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is azim because it has immense fawa'id, immense benefits, and we're going to try to cover what we can from it. But in fact, this hadith in and of itself is enough for a series of lectures and a series of lessons for the mu'mineen. And in this hadith, it fits under this chapter uh, 
Bab Tarheed Min Masawi Al Akhlaq, the chapter of uh, the warning against you know wicked conduct or wicked mannerisms. It fits in this hadith because in it fits in this chapter because in this hadith there are numerous characteristics that the mu'min should avoid and that are un befitting of the believer and numerous characteristics which create a cycle of discord between the mu'mineen. So in this hadith, the Prophet والسلام, the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he began and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, La tu hasadu. This is how he began the hadith. He said, Do not have do not envy one another. In this ibarah, in this statement of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, highlights and prohibits us with a stern prohibition to avoid envy. And we talked about numerous ahadith in this chapter or several hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which talk about the wickedness of envying other people and that the mu'min should strive his his or her utmost uh, to the extent of their ability to remove envy from their heart. And from the types of envy, and as we went into more depth in uh, some of the previous uh, lessons, from the types of envy uh, as a uh, as far as a tarif or as far as a general meaning of envy, it is to remove the ni'ma, the blessings, to wish for the ni'ma of someone else to be removed from them. And there's various ways that this can take place. This can take place, as we mentioned prior to this, by either just wanting them to not have any of the blessings. Or another way is that you want to, the blessing to be removed from them and give it to you. Or a third way is that you want the blessing to be removed from a person and given to someone else. So for example, uh, this hasid could be in a situation, for example, someone, they receive a large sum of money through halal means, for example. And... Another individual feels something in their heart about this individual receiving this great blessing from Allah that they are going to use for khair or whatever they're going to use it for. And this person becomes jealous and envious. And that jealousy and envy leads them to just want that netma removed from that person. As long as they don't have it, then I'm satisfied. That's a type of Hasid, in one of those characteristics, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned against, and it is an evil characteristic. The second way this scenario can play out in the same, uh, with the same scenario, but it's for that individual to wish that that blessing, that wealth, is removed from that individual and given to them. So the person says, I just am not feeling right about this. You know, they say this to themselves. I, I hope that they lose that money and I find it or something something like this. They want it removed from them and they want it given to them. They want it removed from the first person who received a blessing from Allah and they want to have it uh, given to them. The third scenario is perhaps they have a friend, they have a relative and they hope, they wish that that blessing would be removed from that individual and given to their relative. So that is how the, uh, some various ways that scenario can play out. And the Prophet والسلام, warned against uh, having this envy towards one another, towards your brother, your Muslim uh, brothers and sisters. And then the Prophet والسلام, said, Wala tanajishu. And tanajishu, this is a type of, um, a type of transaction in which a person wishes they they maybe falsely bid 
and get involved in uh, bidding a bidding war in order just to raise the price, not because they want the good, not because they want the item. So they bid in order perhaps just to raise the price, maybe to make it more difficult for the buyer or to raise the price to make it more profit for their friend who is the seller. So they're trying to outbid with the intent of raising the price, not in with the intent of actually that they want this product. And so that is impermissible and that is called Tanajishu or Tanajish. And then the Prophet وسلم, said, Wala tabagadu. And do not uh, do not uh, have hatred for one another. So obviously the the Islam calls us to having mahabba and this is from al wala wal bara this is from loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disliking what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests. And so part of loving what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves is loving the mu'mini, is loving your Muslim brothers and sisters. And so that's why the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned against having hatred for your brothers and your sisters. And why this is a trait that's mazmuma. It's a sinful characteristic. And then... Uh, the other characteristics the, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned in there, he said, uh, La tadabru, and tadabru is to turn your backs on one another, and unfortunately, you know, to show your back uh, to your Muslim brother or sister. And this can come in a variety of ways. Often, what comes to mind, my mind, tadabr, is that you're actually you're making hajr of your brother or something like this. that they speak to you, you don't give them salams, or you kind of walk away from them, or something like this, that it's a type of hajr. But in fact, tadabur, as bin Uthaymeen mentions, is actually can be a physical act too, of literally turning your back. And he even mentioned it to such an extent, uh, or detailed it to such a level that perhaps that would be depend upon the culture, that in some cultures, just literally sitting with your back to the person uh, and he, Ben Othimin mentions a scenario in the masjid where a person moves from the front row and then they go to sit and make dhikr up ahead of the row. That this can be, some people can be offended by this. And perhaps this can fall under tadabaru. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. However, in many other cultures, that wouldn't be an issue and people would not probably feel any, uh, have any problem with that. But perhaps amongst the Arabs or perhaps more specifically in Saudi Arabia and some of the Arab countries uh, in the Jazeera to Arab, perhaps from their culture and their customs, that this would be a type of tadabru, you know, where you're turning your back on your brother, where it can be, there could be something negative from it. Uh, and another, then another trait that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned in this hadith, and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam, Wala ba'adukum ala ba'ad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said that, you, you know, you shouldn't, uh, you, none of you should, should sell um, and violate the sale or invalidate the sale of, of his brother. And so, this is uh, can can take place. One of the ways that this can take place is perhaps when an individual he buys something from his brother. So he goes to the store and he buys uh, a phone, for example, and he buys the phone for five hundred reals, for example, Saudi reals, and then he's purchased this, and then he goes. Uh, right when he is leaving the store, uh, another Muslim brother says, hey, I'll give you that same phone for 480 reals. Just take it back. So this is a way in which he is trying to break the sale uh, of his brother uh, and invalidate that sale in order for his profit. So the Prophet ﷺ warned against this, and that's just one of the ways that that scenario can take uh, can take place. 
And uh, another scenario, in Ben Uthaymin, he mentions this. He mentions uh, from another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يخطب على خطبة الأخي خطبة أخي That one of you should not propose for uh, to the one his brother is engaged to. And so this shows that this is a sinful practice and this falls under that other the the bear uh, uh the you know these transactions one uh to to invalidate the transaction of your brother. So this is also similar. So this scenario would be for example if a person um uh, two people are engaged and then another brother maybe he had a feelings an affection for the sister prior to that engagement or whatever the case may be he sees her he doesn't know or he knows she's engaged but he just says listen I have I make more money than him you know I uh, you know I'm more handsome than he is or my family has this you know, whatever the case may be, but he tries to propose to her and she's already spoken for. So this is that scenario and this is from the wicked manners the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned against. And this is from that Masawi al akhlaq This is from that, uh, that uh, the, the wicked mannerisms that the believer must uh, avoid by any and all means. Wallahu musta'an. And then the Prophet ﷺ, as this is a long hadith, uh, there are many, many benefits, and I don't want to prolong the, the hadith, but we want to just talk about some of the main benefits now that we've kind of given a, a bit of uh, explanation of some of the terms and some of the ways uh, and some scenarios. Let's look at the actual hadith, some of the benefits that Ben Uthaymeen mentions. Rahmatullah alayhi, rahmatin wasia. Uh, the Sheikh mentions first one of the fawaid, one of the benefits that we gain is that this hadith makes it clear the nahi and al hasid, the prohibition of envying someone, of, of being envious, that this is prohibited shar'in, this is a, a sinful sin, uh, and this is known because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited it. He warned it in very stern terms by saying, La tahasidu. Do not envy. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the tahrim a tanajish uh, or munajisha. And this is when uh, it, uh, we know because the Prophet sallallahu said, Wala tanajishu. And do not, um, uh, you know, try to outbid your brother in order to raise the price. So, this uh, practice is uh, is prohibited, and we know this from the hadith because the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu clearly stated la, and that la was a la nahi, you know, to, to um, prohibit the the term the the uh, term or the where. The linguistic term in which the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam is, uh, which is for a clear nahi, a clear uh, prohibition. And as we've mentioned prior to this, a nahi you feed a tahrim. That whenever there's a, uh, a nahi, uh, uh, you know, a way in the shara, in the Quran or the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which something is used in the prohibitive form, you know, something is, you know, it's a negative uh, imperative form in which something is negated by saying la means this is for nafi or this is for negation. So here the Prophet ﷺ negated that and that shows that it is something which is muharram unless there would have been something else and there isn't uh, to show that this is a permissible uh, practice. Also from this hadith is also the nahi to, of, of having hatred for your brother. And that should be clear from all the nasus and more specifically this nas 
which prohibits this act, but rather were asked to give gifts and to love one another and spread salams, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And as we studied in the beginning of this, uh, in the book of uh, Kitab al Jami' in the uh, beginning a hadith. Also from this hadith, we see the nahi, or the prohibition of turning our backs upon one another. And this hadith also illustrates for us that Islam uh, is the most complete religion or way of life, if you will, in mu'amalat, in, in every way. So in the way of how we deal with other people. It's so detailed. It's so detailed things that are mishru'ah and things that are uh, intricately detailed from the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and from the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah from the Fuqaha, the, the, the scholars of jurisprudence, that they detailed so many matters intricately from those Nasus, from those texts. Um, another benefit of this hadith is also this hadith also shows that it's an obligation upon us to be servants of Allah, meaning that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith, وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانَ And be brothers, O servants of Allah, or be, and be uh, uh, brothers and servants of Allah. So here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is commanding us with that Islamic brotherhood. And, and he prohibited, as we mentioned, the other traits of cutting one another off and hating one another. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that the when speaking and when dealing with our Muslim brothers and sisters, that we should have a type of um, kindness and affection and gentleness. And even in our statements, even in the way we speak, not just dealing with them in all the other ways, but also in the way we speak to one another. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many shortcomings. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And this is understood because in that hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Al-Muslim, uh, he, he mentioned, or in a, uh, in a uh, he mentioned in the hadith, he said, Al-Muslim, Akhu Muslim. Al-Muslim, Akhul Muslim. He said the Muslim is the brother to the Muslim. So here the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is affirming and asserting that the Muslims are brothers. That brotherhood goes beyond us, goes beyond our feelings and so forth. Uh, and that's why we have to try our best to overlook when we have wicked conduct from some of our brothers and sisters. Some of them, some people are pure. I don't want to use the term pure, but they are very evil in their conduct. Very wicked and evil in their conduct and behavior. And they're Muslim. And they're still Muslim. They may pray. They may make jokes about Islam. They may ridicule other people. They may be pure racist. I deal with people like this all the time. Pure racist. Just re just yesterday, I spoke to an individual. I said, you're very racist. And he told me and bragged about how his people are such and such and this and that and the other. And, you know, and, and, and said many things. And I heard him speaking in Arabic about other races and stuff like this. Asians are like this and these people are like this. And it showed me, you know, this person has so much wickedness outwardly from his behavior. May Allah guide us in him. And it shows us that the Muslim is in need of these reminders. They are in need of these reminders. And learning the book of Allah, the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and studying this chapter, and studying these ahadith, because then they would learn and realize, or at least the hujjah would be established against them, the proof would be established upon them, that they would know these texts. A Muslim, Akhul Muslim. The Muslim is a brother to a Muslim. They're brothers. You're brothers. We're brothers and sisters. And so we cannot have this discord and this hatred for one another. Wallahu Musta'an. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also 
shows us that the Ibn Uthaymin mentions al-madar al-amal fil-qalb that the place of uh, or your 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 deeds are judged in accordance with your heart. And this goes to the hadith which is well known in the Ma'amalu bin Niyat, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, actions are tied to the intentions. Letting us know that actions and intentions are tied together, and the core of your faith, the core of your iman is fil qalb, is in the heart. As the Prophet ﷺ said, In the fi jizid mudratin. The Prophet ﷺ said that verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. And that if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. And if it is sick, the whole body is sick. Verily it's the heart. And in this hadith that we're studying, the Prophet ﷺ has said three times, Atakwahahuna. The Prophet ﷺ pointed to his heart. The taqwa is here. And he said it three times. That lets us know. That's for taqeed. That's letting us know that that's been affirmed by the Messenger of Allah wasallam, And that is where the taqwa is. That's the asl of your iman is in your heart. And it's on your limbs and on your tongues. But the asl, that asl is, that foundation of your iman is in the heart. And the taqwa ha uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith uh, also shows, as the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said at the end of the hadith, and it shows us that there's there's tahrim or there's the sacredness of uh, a Muslim and his his brother Muslim, his his wealth, his blood and his honor, that those are sacred and they must be respected for one another. And this is something we are in need in as an ummah of being reminded constantly. In the next hadith, hadith 1293, narrated Khutbah ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, O oh Allah, distance me from evil characteristics, deeds, passions, and diseases. Reported by a tirmidhi al-Hakam graded as Sahih, authentic, and the wording is his. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we also understand why this hadith is in this bab or in this chapter and that is because this hadith the main topic of this hadith is that this hadith is showing that the prophet alayhi salatu salam sought refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general from those evil manners and characteristics and passions and deeds and diseases sallallahu alayhi wasallam so that shows us that's am that's general and we can gain many benefits uh, from this hadith for that matter. And we can see, and, and it gives us uh, understanding of why it's in this, this uh, chapter, and why it's in this particular, uh, uh, this particular chapter, because it's uh, showing us the importance of seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from wicked characteristics in general. So in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the benefits of this hadith is that the Messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam was a man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who felt the need sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and was in need sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of his Lord tabarak wa ta'ala and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam humbles himself humbled himself before his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and was utmost and upright and the best of examples in ibadah, in worship. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And giving the message to his ummah and illustrating that great uh, uh, qudwa. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, another benefit of this hadith 
is this hadith shows us that akhlaq or manners are divided into two and that's the whole point of this whole chapter if we go back to the beginning of the chapter or the beginning of the yeah the beginning of the whole chapter the uh kitab jama the comprehensive book we talked in depth that these manners are really divided into two types of manners akhlaq tanqasam ila kisman or ila kismain Akhlaq or manners, it divides into two types. Al-Ma'ruf wal munkar So, we have Ma'ruf, which is righteous, good manners, and all that that entails, and we talked about that extensively in the first lesson. Uh, and munkar, sinfulness, wickedness, and that is all of these these characteristics for example that we've been talking about uh in this the this recent bab that we're talking about about tarhib uh a tarhib min masaw masawi akhlaq another benefit of this hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is it also shows the hirs or the vigilance of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in being far removed from wicked manners. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very vigilant in removing himself and distancing himself from those wicked mannerisms and traits. And that this was the tarbiya, the reformation, the education of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for his ummah that he wanted this for us. That we need to practice these righteous characteristics and be ba'id and have bud on those negative traits. You know, be far away from those negative characteristics of envy, turning our back on one another, uh, spying, you know, all of these other uh, characteristics that we talked about that we need to be far away from them. Another benefit of this hadith and the message of Allah alayhi salatu is that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam illustrate for us and that we need to follow this practice and ask Allah the Almighty to help us as servants to be away from wicked deeds. To be away from wicked deeds. And that's why in the hadith, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as uh, Qutba bin Malik, he said, he said, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to say, O oh Allah, it's a sigat dua dua this is the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, supplicating to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's Tawheed. Tawheed, Uluhiya. Tawheed al Ibadah. Allah uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He's supplicating only to Allah Azza wa Jal. And he's saying, Oh Allah, distance me from evil characteristics. The Prophet Sallallahu is asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to protect him from having wicked characteristics. Deeds. What kind of deeds? Wicked deeds. He wants protection and assistance from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to be away from wicked deeds. And that's the shahid there. And so asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help you with your deeds. That that is from the righteous characteristics of the mu'min to ask Allah this. And from the poor characteristics is to actually have those negative traits and negative deeds. Another benefit of this hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is it also shows us that ahwa, and this is another fa'idah, a great benefit that we need to take uh, note of, that ahwa or desires are also of two types. That your desires are also munkar and ma'ruf. That there's also righteous desires. There are good desires. When you, uh, for example, desire the man who desires his wife or the wife who desires her husband in righteousness and or if they're hawa, if their desires are in conformity 
with what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. So if your desire is in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then that's ma'roof, that's good, those are good uh, desires. But desires which are other than that, wicked and evil desires, desires that lead you to the hellfire, that's the munkar, munkar that the, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned against. Another last benefit of this hadith is this hadith, uh, Uh, also shows us the permissibility of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, protect them uh, from receiving um, the sickness of, you know, wicked sick sicknesses and wicked illnesses. You know, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from illness and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from especially sicknesses of the heart, of iman. Allahumma inni as'alaka protection from our wicked selves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection from our wicked selves. Rabbana la tuzig qulubana. Rabbana la tuzig qulubana. بعد ذريتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب أو الله. Please protect our hearts from going astray after they have been guided. Verily, you are and 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 and, and bestow upon us your mercy. Verily, you are al wahab. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and to protect us from wicked manners and akhlaq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.